The Montreal Canadiens ensured there was a hefty amount of drama in the 2022 NHL draft. We finally got the answer to the question on everyone's minds, Shane Wright or Euro Slavkovsky. The hometown Montreal Canadiens drafted first and new general manager Kent Hughes proudly proclaimed that they were taking the winger from Slovakia, Jiro Slavkovsky. But that wasn't the biggest surprise. Just before the draft, Slavkovsky was rocketing up the draft rankings and a few pre-draft rankings had him going first overall. But the second pick came to the New Jersey Devils and they selected Simon Nemec. A double did for the Slovaks. The Devils get an interesting young defender to go with their young forward corpse, but it also left Shane Wright on the hot seat after two picks. The third overall pick belonged to the Arizona Coyotes and they picked one of the highest ranking offensively gifted centermen. I am of course talking about Logan Cooley. And just like that, Shane Wright fell to the fourth overall pick and the Seattle Kraken. Right after him was Cutter Gothier to the Philadelphia Flyers to round out the top five. I don't think anyone saw this coming. Wright, Cooley, and Slavkowski were all pretty tight at the top of the board and it seemed to come down to personal preference on which of the three you'd like more. Generally for most of the season, Wright was seen as a number one but Bob McKenzie had switched Wright and Slavkowski at 1 and 2 for his final draft ranking, and as we all know, Bob McKenzie, for the 11th straight year in a row, has been right about the number 1 overall pick. There was a chance that Wright would be available for the New Jersey Devils. It would be crazy if Wright was open to Arizona, but no one saw it coming that Shane Wright would be a Seattle Kraken. Not even him. If you buy into his reaction after being chosen as a death glare to the Montreal Canadian staff, even though he denied it, it's so pretty funny to look at. But... Why did we see Shane Wright fall to fourth overall? He was given exceptional status as a young teenager to play in the big leagues, but being granted exceptional status does not necessarily guarantee a great NHL hockey player. The players that have been granted exceptional statuses are Connor McDavid, John Tavares, Aaron Ekblad, Joe Valeno, and Sean Day. Day is now 24 and has played just two NHL games so far, and not with the team that drafted him. Valeno is still young, but he hasn't broke out as you would have hoped to as an exceptional player he would be. He was drafted in 2018, played his first game in the NHL in the 2020-21 season, and has played the whole last season while recording a stat line of 8 goals and 15 points in 66 games. Then you see guys like Connor McDavid, John Tavares, and Aaron Ekblad, and we all know that Connor McDavid is the epitome of an exceptional player. He breaks the game and is the best player in the NHL and possibly the most talented forward we've ever seen. Tavares and Ekblad have been stars in their own right, but haven't set the league on fire like McDavid has. Maybe my views on exceptional are a bit too high, but again, we're talking about Connor McDavid. Wright lost a year, as did all hockey players due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and did struggle in this past year. He wasn't very flashy in his game, and for many, that could be a turnoff. Watching his highlights next to Slavkowski's or Cooley's, and you will more than likely going to be left wanting on the right front. Shane Wright is also a high floor slash high ceiling player. He is smart and skilled enough that he is at least going to be a good NHL option, probably great. The risk is low, but the reward is high. Is it quite likely as high as Cooley's or Slavkowski's if they hit their ceilings? Probably not, but Wright also would likely write around that skill level. But the theme of the early first round was high risk slash high reward. Montreal, New Jersey, and Arizona all swung for the fences, ignoring the safer option in the hope that their draft pick would develop correctly and become the best player in the NHL draft this year. If Euro Slavkovsky gets to a ceiling, he is a dominant power forward capable of scoring 40 goals and 80 points in a season. Kent Hughes and the Montreal Canadiens are banking off Slavkovsky hitting his peak and not becoming another Josh Anderson type prototypical power forward, because if neither grows their full potential, I think that Wright would be the better player. But if both players reach their potential, I think that Slavkovsky has the edge. And so it honestly all comes down to strategy. I like the safer options early in the draft and leave the attempt to home run swings in the later rounds. And I believe that Shane Wright was the closest thing to a sure thing next year. Wright is now going to be playing with a chip on his shoulder. A great thing to hear if you are a Seattle Kraken fan. Slavkowski also seems to like the attention that being a number one pick to Montreal of all teams seems like a dream come true. Ultimately, I think that all teams that did pass on Shane Wright were looking at the upside rather than safety. In drafts, there are home run swings on a safety bunts. Wright is a safe pick, but fell due to the mentality of these teams taking big risks. This isn't a bad mentality when it comes to a draft like this, where there isn't a clear cut first overall pick. A good middle six forward is a player that you can pick up in free agency or through a trade, but it is much harder to pick up a top line power forward, super offensively talented center, or a top pairing defender in the NHL draft. Wright does have a really high ceiling and floor, but his play this past year has put doubts into many scouts' minds on whether he could reach his full potential. And if he does reach his full potential, Wright will be a great 200 foot player and the number one center on whichever TV is, probably at this point on the Seattle Kraken, but 
Something that, truth be told, there are other players in the NHL draft that fit the same bill, and they might even be considered kind of the same value as Shane Wright. For example, if Slavkowski or Cooley were to hit their full potential, they will become something very unique and special. And the problem with them is that if they don't, they won't be near as effective as Wright if he doesn't hit his ceiling. So there's a lot of pressure on Wright. But in the end, the Seattle Kraken still win because at fourth overall, they got a player who they were not expecting to pick and Wright was the safe pick. Montreal, New Jersey, and Arizona went for the big swings and Shane Wright dropped into Seattle's lap. If Montreal, New Jersey, and Arizona's picks, if they all just don't work out, if Nemec, if Slavkovsky, if Cooley just do not work out, even if Shane Wright doesn't work out as much as the Kraken expected to, it's not going to be as much of a loss because the Kraken didn't necessarily kind of go for the big swings the way Montreal, New Jersey, and Arizona did. But we will see how everything plays out this season and for the rest of the future. Thank you guys for tuning in and have a wonderful day.